Hello and welcome back to Not Your Inspiration, the podcast where I ramble about disability. My name is Gray, I'm the host of this shit show. I have a bit of a cold today, so if my voice sounds a little funky, that is why. And before I jump into everything, I would just like to thank everyone. I've been getting a lot of positive support recently, and it means a lot. I'm very grateful. It warms the cockles of my heart. Anyway, that being said, today I want to talk about beauty and capitalism and gender dysphoria and disability and body image and all of that great juicy stuff. So buckle up, friends, because this is going to be a hell of a one-sided discussion. I think it's fairly decently well discussed within the communities that I am in that society tries to sell us products we don't need and they do that by making us feel ugly and this stuff is especially targeted at women i think makeup companies um face cream basically any company tries to make us feel like our skin isn't perfect or we need to wear makeup or we need to lose weight and therefore we need to buy their weight loss product or their makeup or their acne cream or whatever And so I feel like a lot of these standards of beauty are really based in making money. Skincare Twitter has been a thing going around, and I think it's great that people are sharing their tips and tricks of the trade. But I also think it's important to recognize that there's nothing inherently wrong with having quote-unquote bad skin. And when all of this energy is being focused and channeled into promoting these before and after transformations of people who go from having normal acne to flawless skin, it can make people feel like they need to do that too in order to receive positive attention or feel beautiful. And I just think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with like, getting clear skin or doing what you want to do, but I think people need to sometimes realize their motivations for it. And if you want to get clear skin because that'll make you feel better and that's something you want to do, then that's amazing. But you shouldn't do it... You should. I think it's just important to be aware of our own internal biases and prejudices against ourselves. And the same goes for makeup. Um, there's like a whole trend that's been going around for a while of really, really young kids doing very professional looking makeup young girls mostly and it it breaks my heart to be honest 10 year olds 9 year olds shouldn't feel like they need a professional looking contour or perfectly sculpted eyebrows to feel beautiful and of course that's not something that a kid would wear like every day to the third grade but I still think that instead of looking at these really young girls on the internet doing perfect makeup and being like oh my god they're so cute and talented and mm, her eyebrows are on fleek and they look better than mine I think we should be saying, why is this girl so good at this? Why does she need to do this? And what kind of society are we living in where we feel like we have to do this? And yes, we all know that people try and sell us things and blah, blah, blah. And I don't mean to say, oh, if you wear makeup, then you're an awful, evil pawn of capitalism. No, of course not. Makeup is absolutely an art form but it needs to be appreciated as an art form and not as an expectation of something that women do. I think makeup absolutely is a skilled professional thing and there's nothing wrong with wearing it. But a lot of times when people try and say, hey, you know, a lot of these beauty products are sold by convincing mostly women that they're ugly without them and that's a problem, A lot of people who are really into makeup will be like, oh, you're just bitter because your eyeline isn't on fleek, you know? It's, there's nothing wrong with doing makeup or any of this stuff. I'm using makeup as an example, but clear skin, weight loss, I mean, anything. We need to know where it comes from. And it comes from a place of really wealthy men and companies making us feel ugly in order to sell something. And I think a lot of times, even body positivity is a commodity. Like Dove, for example, the soap company. By the way, I hope I don't get sued for this. Probably not. I'm not famous enough. You know, they have all these campaigns that's, you know, love yourself and we'll make soap bottles shaped like different bodies or whatever. At At the end of the day, is it really body positivity if they're just trying to sell you something? And I don't have the answer to that question. It, it, there is no answer to that question. 
Dove and other companies like Dove are not talking about body positivity to start a revolution. They're talking about it to sell you their soap. Even the, po the body positivity is sometimes there's a price tag on it. And by the way, the company that makes Dove soaps also makes Axe deodorant. And in their commercials, it's not about body positivity. It's about women in really skimpy bikinis because they're targeting a different demographic. And that demographic is straight men as opposed to women who are like, hey, maybe we shouldn't hate ourselves. So I think as not hating yourself and loving yourself becomes more popular, companies are starting to capitalize on that. It's something to be aware of. There's not an answer to that or a right or wrong, but people don't often talk about the fact that even quote unquote body positivity is often sold and marketed in the same way as hating yourself is. And a lot of it's subliminal. It's not like you walk into a Sephora and they're like, oh, you're fucking ugly. Like you need this foundation for $40 or else you're never going to get a date ever. You know, like it's not like that, but it's a lot of subliminal stuff really. And this is fairly well talked about, at least within the communities that I frequent and pretty well known, I think, amongst people. I mean, nothing I'm saying is really a new revolutionary concept. I do want to talk about body positivity and like the body posi, oh, my voice cracked, sorry, movements, um, because they're great. And I'm all for body positivity, of course. I'm not here being like, I hope you all hate yourselves. They're not always the most inclusive, though. And this is kind of a segue into my next few things, which is how do you love yourself when you have major gender dysphoria or are disabled? And I'm getting to that, but we'll keep it on the back burner for now. I want to say this. I think a lot of bo body positivity movements tell people oh you're beautiful no matter what i don't think we should tell people they're beautiful no matter what i think we should tell people you are worthy no matter what and beauty does not equal worthiness right now i think we live in a world where the standard idea is beauty equals worthiness and deservingness and that is just not true it shouldn't be true so I think instead of telling people, oh, you are beautiful no matter what, we should say, it doesn't matter if you're beautiful. You are worthy no matter what. And you are deserving no matter what. I don't think beauty should be this be-all, end-all thing where, you know, oh, you need to feel beautiful. I think we should, frankly, be able to not feel beautiful and still feel good about ourselves and still feel worthy. So, of course, I love the body positivity movements and I'm all for them. But I also think it's important to recognize that beauty is not this, you know, have it or you have nothing type of thing. And even if, like, you know, I, I just think saying, oh, everyone is beautiful, that's great. But we should also say everyone is worthy regardless of beauty. It is very difficult to love yourself when say you have gender dysphoria you know it's very hard to look in the mirror and be like yes i am proud of this body when you want it to not have boobs or to have boobs or your hips to be thinner or wider or your jawline to be more square and masculine or sharper and feminine there are so many things and it is I don't think it's often talked about. There's this feeling of wanting to crawl out of your own skin because you don't identify with it. And on top of that, you have people telling you, oh, just love yourself. Of course you should love yourself. But it's extraordinarily difficult when you feel like the body you're living in is not yours, is not a good image of you. And of course, it gets even more complicated when that body is sick or disabled. How do you feel beautiful when your body is treated like a lab rat, a guinea pig, a sideshow curiosity, a public commodity? And I don't know. There is no answer to that question. For me personally, it's hard to be like, yeah, I love this body and feel beautiful and body positivity, you know, like hashtag body posi. It's very hard for me to do that 
when my body is kind of public enemy number one in my life. I'm very appreciative of the skin that I'm in, but it's kind of fucked me over at every chance it gets. It's not been a very good friend to me, and in fairness, I haven't been very kind to it. Of course, on top of just the fact that my body is kind of mutinous, the public does not see disability as something beautiful, or to get more specific, something sexual at all. And that's a huge misconception, and totally wrong, but it's of course a really prevailing stereotype and idea in our minds, and it can be extraordinarily hard to shake and get over. And on top of that, my body spends most of its time not being looked at by partners in awe, but by doctors and their residents, and sometimes they whip out their phone and take a picture to use for educational purposes, and sometimes I get written up in a medical journal as quote-unquote patient A or patient B or, you know, blank your old female with X, Y, and Z problems. How on earth do you love something and appreciate something that is not only treated like a boring lab report and a case file, but is also an asshole to you? I don't know. I'm working on it. And then a part of me wonders, do you have to love your body? There's part of me that's like, how do I love this body that is not quite the right gender and really non-functional? And part of me is wondering, do I have to love my body? Why, why are we told that we should and we have to? And yeah, you can argue that, you know, it's no fun to not like your body and blah, 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 but... Why, why do I feel this pressure to love myself and like I'm doing something wrong if I don't love my physical self? Don't know. There's no answer to that question. Just some food for thought. One interesting thing that happened that kind of speaks to this and kind of doesn't. I am very self-conscious about my legs because I'm not walking, and so they're thin and bony and gross, and my left foot turns in at a 90 degree angle, and I have scars all over my feet and calves, and they're just not not my proudest achievement. I'm not going to be a leg model anytime soon. And for a while, I would wear multiple layers of knee-high socks and kind of bunch them up. And I thought that that was a brilliant way of, I don't know, making my legs seem more normal. And of course, it was a pointless and kind of sad in retrospect effort. But I would do that all the time. And people would be like, it's mid-July. Why are you wearing two pairs of knee-high socks? And what do you say? Like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm majorly self-conscious. And I don't know. I don't know what you say to that, but I used to do that. I've gotten over that phase, but that used to be a thing. I would wear black leggings and two pairs of knee-high socks and a flannel shirt every single day. Every single day for years. Anyway, moving on. Someone once complimented me, and they meant it as a genuine compliment. They were like, oh my god, your legs are so thin. Like, I wish I was that skinny. And there's so much to unpack there, because first of all, Oh my god, I don't even know where to start with this. First of all, my heart dropped and I just wanted i wanted to disappear more than I have ever wanted to disappear. I did not know how to respond to that. Because they meant it as a compliment, but that was my biggest insecurity and I was like, I don't know. I didn't know what to do. On top of that, why was this person looking at me and thinking, God, I wish I was that thin? There's something wrong with that too. I'm not a healthy skinny. Muscle atrophy is not a healthy, like, oh my god, I wish I had that kind of thing. It's a side effect of not walking for three, four years. And it, in the moment, I was red in the face and shaking, and I was like, uh, uh, thank you, I appreciate it. But thinking about it, it kind of made me realize how these unhealthy standards are lauded and appreciated, and whether that unhealthy standard is me and my legs being complimented or the other person who wanted to be that thin and that skeletal, I don't know. 
There were also times when I was having major GI issues and I would be totally malnourished and thin and underweight and people would be like, oh my god, you look so good. And I would be bony and gross and weird and totally anemic and malnourished, be like, oh my god, your skin is so pale and you got that nice goth look and oh, I wish I was that thin and I just wanted to slap them because it wasn't healthy. But at the same time, why do people want why, why is that something to look up to? Why do we want that? And I'm not saying like, oh, thin phobia is a thing. Like, no, of course not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying people would rather be unhealthy and quote unquote beautiful than healthy and quote unquote ugly. Even within a lot of body positivity movements. Historical side note, I was reading about the Victorian era and Victorian era public health crises, as I so often do, because in my mind I'm on like a beautiful 19th century bed with like a gold encrusted headboard and nice silky French linen looking out wistfully at the misty English seaside. Anyway, that is not my point. Apparently, in Victorian times, tuberculosis was very in fashion, and women wanted to look like they had tuberculosis because having TB at that time you'd be really pale because you were anemic and that was really in. I mean this was a time when people put arsenic on their faces to look pale and you'd be really thin because you were malnourished and dying of tuberculosis and because you were coughing up blood your lips would have a nice red hue to them and that was seriously in fashion. And it's super easy to laugh at that and be like, oh, those crazy Victorians with their corsets and wanting to get tuberculosis. It's not that much different now. We still appreciate unhealthiness over healthiness and not looking like a certain way. And even within communities that say, well, actually, you don't need to look like you're on the cover of Vogue. I mean, that is not a revolutionary idea by any means. In fact, it's so not revolutionary that companies, the very people that started these body ideals, are now capitalizing off of this body positivity and self-love movement. That is how unrevolutionary it is. That is not to say at all that it is bad to, like, buy into that or feel it. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say I, by no means, am taking credit for that idea. But my point is... Self-love is great, and feeling beautiful is great. But my question is, why do we need to feel beautiful to be happy? All right, I'll leave you on that. That is it for this episode. Thank you for listening. Quick self-promo, as always, I do have a Patreon. It is patreon.com slash notyourinspo. Um, When I reach a certain point, I am going to start another podcast where I interview different people um, and just talk about their stories with disability because disability is super common and it is not often talked about in a real human way. If you are listening on YouTube or the podcast app, subscribe either way. All right, that is it for self-promo. Thank you for listening and as always, take care of yourselves.